you to do is have a think. You might just keep the ideas in your head or you might want to jot some points down. But think about what sort of letter Zane is writing then. Is it formal? Is it informal? You know, for example, do we get clues as to um, does he know who he's writing to? What sort of information is he disclosing in the letter? OK, so just try and think carefully about what you understand from his letter. OK, off you go when you're ready. It doesn't matter if you don't, you haven't written the whole letter, say. So yeah, I only, did my, I only did my introduction. That's fine. OK. Dear Lincoln, I'm writing, I'm writing to you to tell you that I have very good news for both of us. I've booked two tickets to go to Italy and see the Alps. There is a hotel nearby, but be prepared. There will be a lot, a lot of walking. By the way, this is your early birthday present. Oh, wow. Excellent. OK, right. Thank you, Zane, for starting us off. OK, thoughts from others. What do you think about Zane's letter? Taya. I think it's formal because he says, like, by the way, which is probably not something that you'd say if it was formal. Uh, in no, formal, yeah. So do you think it's formal or informal? Just recap informal. on what you... Sorry, so yeah, okay. So you think it's informal. Yeah, that's what I was going to agree with you. I was like, mm, I think it is quite informal. Yeah, okay. So you think it's informal from the language he's used. Okay. Zane, do you agree with what Ty has said about your letter? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyone else want to comment? Thank you, Ty. And anyone else want to comment on Zane's letter? Okay, I'm going to say that I think you use the second image for inspiration. Is that true, Zane? Yep, going to the Italian Alps. Okay, so we don't know that's necessarily Italy, but we know that the Alps, um, well, they, they're not just in Italy, but they do go down into Italy from France too. And, you know, you said it was, did you say it was going to be a walking holiday? I think you did, yeah, because you said it would be quite exhausting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Right, okay. Um, were you writing to a friend? Yeah, it was like a friend. That's why I was informal. Great, excellent. Thank you, Zane. All right, so we got some features there. And you used dear and you named the person that you did. Yeah, excellent. Okay, anyone else want to share their letter? Anyone want to share a little bit about what they wrote? Stitty, was your hand up or has it gone down? Um, yeah, I'll share. Thank you. So the same, I'd like everyone else to listen, please. Dear Maya, I do hope you're doing you're doing well and I can't wait until you get back home. I just wish I could go with you. The mountains are probably not too far away, right? Thank you, Stussy. Good. Okay. What have we learned about what Stussy's written for the start of her letter then? What have we written? Anyone else? Farish? Her letter is informal. Right, it's informal. Yep, Stutty, do you agree? Just give us a nod if you agree with what Farish has said. Yep, okay, it's informal. What clue gave you, what clue um, told you it was informal, Farish? Uh, the mountains are not far, right? Okay, the mountains aren't far, right. Okay, so the language that... Um, she was using the letter saying. Um, I think it's informal because she says, I can't wait. And if it was formal, she would have said, I cannot wait. OK, thank you. So using, um, yep, contractions there. Hamden, was your hand up? Yep, good boy. So again, we were looking at this image, I believe. And then Hamden. Uh, I wanted to read my um, little outs. All right, you, you, um, has anyone done the first image? We've had two so far from the second image, which I've just circled. Did you, Hamden? Brilliant, excellent, well, perfect. Well, then you if, reach... uh, yeah. Uh... So, did you want to read yours, Hamden? No. No, no, okay, no problem. All right, right, we'll move on from those at the moment then. Good. Excellent. So it's just getting you doing a little bit of writing. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, so now moving on, we've talked a little bit about letter writing. Now we're going to move on to debate writing. Okay, put your hand up. Just give me a wave of a hand if you enjoy writing debates, if you've perhaps recently done some debate writing at school. Um, and then give me a thumbs down if you haven't really done much in terms of debate writing. Okay, you haven't done much. Some of you have done some. Okay, good. So a real mixture, which is always nice to see because then we can learn from each other too. Right, so debate writing. What do we know about debates? First of all, before I just read to you from here, what do we know about debates? What is a debate? When might a debate happen? Same, start us off. Um, I think the debate is kind of like an argument. Good. Or when, yeah. Like when um, people have different opinions on something. Yeah, and they're trying to put across their argument, aren't they? Yeah, they're trying to get their argument across. Good. Right. So when writing to argue, persuade, and advise, you're putting forward your view to the reader, and each purpose has different techniques. A written argument is not the same as a verbal argument with a friend. Can you imagine, you know, you're disagreeing with your friend in the playground about something. That's very different to a written argument where it's written down and you're perhaps then going to be debating it. OK, so a ver verbal argument with a friend that might be full of passion as you say strongly what you think because it's at the spur of the moment. It's happening right there in front of you. A written argument, you obviously have more time to, to think about it, don't you? So when you write to argue, your audience are strangers and they're not friends. This means a more formal, fair and well-structured approach is likely to work best. A written argument can work well when it's presented as a debate between opposing views. So people who have got opposite opinions on things. This can help make you seem much more fair minded and that you have weighed up the pros and the cons before coming to your own view. Why is it good to try and present both sides fairly? OK, let's just have a think about that question posed at the end there. So why is it good to try and present both sides fairly? So imagine if you've got a debate happening, but why is it always good to try and present both sides fairly? What do we think about that? Anyone want to share any ideas? Let's see. Anyone's got there? Well, if you were in the audience and you were listening to the debate, you want a clear picture, don't you, of exactly what the two sides of the argument are. You don't just want to hear one side and one approach. Stuti, what do you want to add or ask? Like, like 